Hello guys and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about version-based database migration with Liquibase. Creating database seems to be easy when you don't have to support multiple versions of your database or work with huge teams. You just create an SQL script from your database model and then execute it manually or use GPA to do that automatically. However, if you're working on multiple database versions, this approach won't work and extracting the required changes from the test database becomes a huge mess, especially if you work in a team and number of changes increases. This can be avoided by creating database update script while working on the next release and save them along with your code in Git or any other version control system. Whenever someone gets the code changes, they will also get the database update changes. And with a tool like Liquibase and Flyway, the changes can even be applied automatically. In this tutorial, we are going to look into Liquibase as a way to perform database migrations. Liquibase is an open source database independent library for tracking managing and applying database schema changes. Here are some of the benefits you get with Liquibase. First one is automatic updates. This is very useful especially when you have multiple database instances running, example staging, testing, production. This can be applied automatically whenever you make any changes on the database. The second one is automatic creation and execution of rollbacks whenever there are failed updates. Liquibase manages and records the changes in your database schema by applying diff of the current schema and the final schema. If there is a failed update during execution, then it rolls back to the previous update. There are different supported formats in Liquibase, including XML, JSON, YAML, and SQL. If you are working on an application with multiple releases, in most cases, one file for each release is created called changelog. One changelog may contain one or more change sets. We are going to look into changelog when we get into code. A change set describes a set of changes that database executes within one transaction. To enable successful rollbacks and keep track of executed change sets, each change set is identified by an order name and ID. These are stored together with the name of the changelog file in the database changelog table as a unique identifier of each change set. The change sets could be anything related to the database changes for example, create a table, insert into a table, alter a table, and so on. Let's get into code and see how we can apply this. So go to your editor and start a new project. Go to create a new project, choose a spring initializer, and then go to next. On this, you can choose your group name. I'll say Iod of Dixon, Artifact, so Liquibase, demo next and here we want to choose uh, some dependencies go to web choose spring web ops for spring boot actuator go to sql choose liquid base migration h2 or h2 database and mysql driver go to next finish so we are here on IntelliJ. First thing we go to the POM file. Let me reduce this. Enable auto import changes. And then on this file, we want to add another plugin for Liquibase. Plugin and group ID org.liquibase. Then the artifact ID Liquibase mapping plugin. And now we need to do the configuration here so that it automatically uh, picks the location of our file, which is application.properties. So we add property file, which will be source main resources stroke applications dot properties. And now, since we have this, we need to overrule the default configuration by adding property will override and we set it to true. All right, now we are set. 
we have H2, we have our liquid base, make sure it's liquid base core, MySQL. The next file we are going to create is application.properties. So open up source main, Java, and then resources. All right, so in case you have a flyway, you need to add spring.liquidbase enabled to true and then spring.flyway.enabled to false but right now we, we don't actually require that because we are using liquidbase start by adding a name let's call it liquidbase demo and then we need to add the change log class path db change log stroke change log master.xml now as you notice we don't have this file yet but we are going to create it first let's finish up with the configuration data source url jdbc mysql localhost 3306 liquid base this is my local db i'm using mysql and this is my schema it can be any name so you can name your schema to anything that you want so we are going to use mysql driver sql.jdbc.driver and then we are going to add our username and password so my username is root and here you're going to add your password whatever you added as a password to your local database for me i'm using mysql workbench so whatever password is there you're going to put it here so that you connect to your database and then we are going to set hibernate to none and then the last thing we are going to set h2 console to true all right now we are done we are going to create our changelog master file i'll just copy that and then right here create a new file click ok and then to populate our data in changelog master we need to have the template so instead of typing the template from scratch i'll go to www.liquidbase.org stroke best practices.html and right here i'll have the template so i'll just copy that then paste it there then delete two files and now i have one include file which we don't have yet but we are going to create it for this one db.changelog and the version number as i told you earlier you need to create different files for different versions so that it's easier for someone to read i'm going to change this to changelog and then the version i keep it as version 1.0 and now we need to create this file copy that i create a new file and that's it and now this is where you can place your changes in the same way i'm going to copy the template and paste it right there close that and now this is the place that we are going to add our change set all right but before we do that we need to confirm that we are connected to a database so i'm going to add my password right here and then come back all right so we're done so we can close this file and now we have this but to make sure that we are connected to the database successfully we can use jpa to add data into our database and with that way we can confirm that our database is alive and it's working and from there we can use liquidbase now to make the changes automatically let's go ahead and create a new file we are going to start with controller on controller make sure that you are annotated with rest controller and then add request mapping this is the url route that you are going to use so right here we are going to add public method for string and then create person at request param string name person repository dot save all right, but we don't have the repository, so we have to create the repository first. Private person repository. So let's create this file. Person repository. It's an interface, and then we annotate it with repository. And then we extend CRUD repository. We might be missing something should come automatically okay let's find out from our phone file all right yeah we need to add one more dependency for jpa spring boot starter jpa from org spring framework dot boot 
all right there you go let's go ahead and try again so crud repository and there you go and then here we need to pass person as our entity int but we don't have person yet so let's go ahead and create that file let's annotate it as entity let's also give it a name a table name persons and then create our unique identifier which is id on our case annotate it with at id and auto generate let's add our strategy generated type we want to change auto to identity but if you're using spring boot one point something then it's okay to use auto but i'm using spring boot 2.2 I'm going to use dot identity to show that it's a unique identity for this particular entity all right at the same time we want to annotate this as a column let's give it a name id let's go ahead and create another column called name and probably height or anything so this will be column and this at column as well and then let's go ahead and create our constructor and then again create an empty constructor this is useful for assistance and then we're going to create our getters and setters Alright, now that we have everything set up, we can go back to our repository, uh, so this should be integer, done, and now we have our repository, and then we want to add our personalized query, which is not part of the CRUD, go ahead and create it, at query, select name from person, P. give it an alias, where p.name, like the name that we are going to pass person name and then we close it and now this is our method find by name I'm going to pass in string person name and that's it so we can close our repository and then go to our controller we want to save person first before we can retrieve them so we say new person person name and then height say 6.7 and then return the person that we've just saved plus saved successfully let's go ahead and add another method to retrieve all the person we should annotate it with at post mapping person and auto wire this let's go ahead and create this method to return a list of person and then get all the people and then return Person repository dot find all Let's cast that into list go to our workbench and try to test it so here on my workbench we're going to use liquid base as my schema and now we want to create a new table where we are going to make the changes Let's go ahead and create it create table persons we're going to add some attributes there ID of type int not now and then name 255 it's the length of the characters and the height of type characters as well 255 and then close that so let's try to execute that try to refresh our schema and pass on table is created have id name and height so we can try to check if it's connected successfully so we are going to use our postman to test so let's go ahead and run this application so that we test it with postman so we've got an error here saying class path resource cannot be resolved so let's go ahead and check that we are supposed to change on change log master to match the location of the file let's go ahead and try it again now you can go to our postman and give it a try 
So person, see if it works, person, and then change this to post, and then we add a name, name equals to Clara, and Clara saved successfully, in case you get an error, so make sure that the ID is the primary key, and you can tick auto increment apply all right so if we try to retrieve all saved data we have Clara and height is 6.7 now we, we are sure that our database is connected well and you can see we only have one entity all right so let's go ahead and create our changes on the change log so assuming you want to change the person and add a description or something else say string address at column add our get and setter if we go to postman and try to add another person Fidelis change that to post so if we try to retrieve all the people you'll still get name and height but what if you want to change that and add this column address we're going to our change log file and add a change set id1 other add column table name is persons and column we need to also add a schema. My schema is the liquid base, and then the name of the column, address, and the type. And that's it. So if we rerun this again. And go to our postman and try to execute the post command again. Let's change name to Miriam. Sorry, let's change this to post. Miriam saved successfully. So if we try to retrieve that, now we get address with a null value since we haven't added anything. So that's adding a column. So now let's try to delete. So change set ID two should be unique ID. The other can be the same or different according to the team. Say delete name schema table name persons schema name schema name liquid base and then where clause name equals to fidelis all right let's try to rerun again awesome fidelis is deleted so that's it guys you know how to add change set and you can insert a row you can create a table you can do whatever you want with this change log and if you want to add another version you just add another file and then add it on change log master thank you and subscribe to my channel if you haven't